Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, I forgot there's no replies. Um, it's great to be back to work, and it's great to be back working with foundations. It's been uh, almost 12 months, I think, since, uh, since I last saw Paul uh, uh, in, a, in a, a venue somewhere across the UK. Um, so it's great to be back. Uh, we've not stood still. Um, you know, since, uh, since the shut, shut down, um, you know, we've been locked away in our homes, but uh, we've been eagerly uh, working, very busy, um, to make sure that this industry is serviced with product, uh, with product advice, with technical advice and marketing. Um, so before I get any further, I would like to show you this. that because um, it, it's, um, it's something that uh, was done um, by a marketing uh, department. Um, it's got a bit of energy, it's got a bit of power and basically, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good way of coming back from lockdown um, with, with a show of innovation, which is what we are as a company. Um, we do manufacture products for the, for the, um, for the healthcare market in showering. Um, we are... We're the, kind of, we're the kind of company, we're not just a company that makes products, we listen to feedback, we take, um, we take feedback very seriously, we shape our products around the feedback we get from, um, from you guys when we're out uh, on the road seeing you guys, uh, but also from the installers, uh, everybody that used the product, we take, uh, we take all of the um, uh, feedback that we get uh, from these guys and we innovate into new products for, for, uh, for ease of use, um, uh, um, for look, um, for ease of uh, specification um, and also uh, you know we have uh, very um, big guarantees on a lot of the products as well so um, you know for people that are doing the maintenance on the products uh, we want we want those people to enjoy these products and, and, and we want it to make their lives easy as well so I'm going to talk about wet rooms today um, but if you know us as a company you'll know we've got a lot of other things as well um, our main uh, we are the wet room specialists so uh, we do specialise in, uh, in in wet rooms, uh, in, uh, in in walk-in showering. Um, we also um, we tick the box for everything uh, as far as uh, level access showering. So if you're governed by Part M regulations or the Equalities Act, level access showering is the only thing that you can put in there that will tick those boxes. So so do be aware of that. Um, I'm going to talk about level access quite a lot today, and I'm going to show you the product a little bit closer so you can get your head around how it works and how simple it is. Now, I do understand talking to, uh, talking to a lot of OTs over the last sort of 15 years is there are sometimes a little bit of conflict between, uh, between uh, different parties and contractors. And um, uh, we've spent quite a lot of time uh, with the College of OTs uh, myth-busting uh, problems with um, or technical problems or, or solutions with products that we have for things that happen. Um, uh, unforeseeable things that happen before an adaptation starts. So we, we get involved in all areas with this, really. Um, we also do um, a lot of other things rather than, uh, than, than wet rooms. We do low-level shower trays. Uh, we have a range that have um, uh, anti-slip um, uh, surfaces on it. And if anybody's got any questions on any of this while we're going along, um, like SJ, I'm, I'm, I can't do so many things at once, but I've got... I've got an incredible team behind me. I've got Sarah in marketing. So if you need any information, she's there uh, at the touch of a button. And I've also got um, Toby who runs the technical department back here at, um, at, at MP uh, to answer any technical questions that you might have. So uh, I'll prompt those at the end of each screen. So uh, do feel free to do that. Uh, it won't put me under pressure because I've got, I've got my, time, my team looking at it in the background. So um, wet rooms. We, we, we are the wet room specialist. We've been doing wet rooms for a long time. Um, we started the business uh, in the healthcare market doing wet rooms. So we've been doing this from, from, from about 1998. So we've, we've had a lot of time to, uh, uh, to make products. We've had a lot of time to, uh, to improve the products. We're actually on third generation products now. So um, every time uh, we, get, we get ideas, we get innovations and, and we can put those into products to make it more robust 
easier to use, easier to fit, but it, but but all round easier for everybody to uh, to use as as a product. Uh, the low level shower trays are are are, are an alternative to uh, the level access. Um, the reason that we have those is because sometimes you can't get level access showering into your, in, in, into a certain floor. Um, so a low level option is 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 sometimes the only practical thing that can that can be done. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do to create level access, and 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 we'll be quite happy to answer those questions if you if you have got certain situations where you're not sure if you can do it or not. Um, and we're quite happy to uh, to look at your plans, look at your drawings to see what sizes and uh, uh, what configurations of, of half height doors even uh, would fit into that situation for for, for those particular situations. Um, we also do uh, half height shower doors as well, half height care screens. We can do those in, in, in every configuration that you could possibly think of. Um, those are at standard 750 high. They're a very light aluminium door with a polycarbonate glazing in them. Uh, they are also, um, a, th there's a lot of bespoke options available. So if we've got a configuration that doesn't suit you, we could probably, uh, we could probably bespoke something that would, that would make it work. Um, you know, to suit the abilities of the person that you, that's, that's using the apparatus. Um, generally, uh, the half height doors are the, uh, are the go-to for these, but, um, you know, there are a lot of cases where people don't need a carer every day to shower. Um, and we are, um, you know, we are uh, the forefront of, of, of this industry with, uh, with products. And, and we do see that um, there are other options available, which we do manufacture. And after talking to a lot of OTs over, um, over the last few years, um, I think we're all in the same boat and thinking that, you know, these things don't need to look clinical uh, to get a practical product. And, and we have a full range of those. And I don't know how well you can see the screen that we've got, but there's a couple of uh, really nice images to the, uh, to the left of the presentation uh, that show you what you can actually have. Um, now, these, all these products are practical bathing in disguise. All of them meet the DDA and Equalities Act regulations. Um, sometimes, um, you know, glass screens can create a little bit more light, a little bit more vision. And, and, and it doesn't give you that kind of enclosed feel that, uh, that a half height screen with a shower curtain can, can create. So, you know, we're trying to tick every box with the products that we, uh, that we create. Um, and now I know that, uh, or now we know that uh, a lot of the OTs are, uh, think the same as us about innovative, nice looking products in people's houses. Uh, we've got products that will, that will suit the price range of the DFG as well. So if you've got um, a client that, uh, that does need a little bit of extra space in there, or they need a little bit of extra light, um, and, and, and a glass screen would suit that, do have a look at the product range that we have on there, because we're in the same mindset as you guys. Um, you know, it doesn't have to look clinical for it to be practical and to be um, sufficient for, for, the, for the person's abilities in that, in that showering room. Now, we do understand that the shower room or the bathroom is one of the most dangerous places in the, uh, in the house um, because there are water involved in it. Uh, but there are a lot of things we can do. Um, you know, a good example is the, uh, is the slip resistance that we put into our, into our uh, low level shower trays. Uh, the DIMBY rating will allow the uh, shower tray to be tipped to 18% before uh, you lose traction with, uh, with a wet foot. Um, so they are, um, you, you know, they are a, a good alternative if you can't get level access into your, into your solid floor. Um, also, uh, we do find that uh, with some shower trays, if you've got somebody who's got a non-slip um, um, flooring down there, uh, the transition between walking onto a non-slip floor onto a shower tray can be a little bit tricky because you've... Uh, um, you know, your client, uh, especially someone who uh, uh, is, is possibly got Alzheimer's, uh, they kind of get used to walking on, um, on, on these non-slip floors. And the transition between stepping onto a shower tray, they kind of, they kind of get a lot of faith in, in, in what the uh, non-slip flooring does. And if you step onto a wet shower tray, you're still kind of using that, that same mindset um, um, to, to step onto that shower tray. Although a lot of the shower trays on the market don't have that slip resistance. Uh, so that was our, our thoughts behind the uh, slip resistance that we put into some of the above ground shower trays. Uh, when we're dealing with level access, it's generally covered with the uh, uh, with a non-slip flooring anyway. So uh, that transition isn't present in that in that situation. But um, you know, not having that slip resistance in some of the shower trays that we have, it leaves a little bit of a gaping hole for for safety in the uh, in in the uh, in the bathroom, which. Uh, 
which, um, you know, if you look at the stats at accidents at home, um, they're very high around, um, around the bathroom, up to, up to 75% if you go onto the HSE website. Um, so support rails, grab rails, um, anything that we, can, uh, that we can supply to aid people to, to reduce that risk factor in, the, in that room, um, they're all available from us. Um, we have kind of moved the goalposts a little bit. We've got some very nice looking um, rails that are as practical as, uh, as, the, as the stuff that you would normally get. Um, we have beefed up some of the uh, rails that we supply um, to make sure that they're not just your standard white fluted grab rail that, that, that might be affected by direct sunlight or hot and cold or, or some shampoos or, or cleaning products that are used within the shower. So uh, we've kind of beefed those up and, and made them a little bit more robust. Um, and we've also uh, you know, moved away from the sort of round grip uh, fluted grip that uh, tends to be a little bit uncomfortable if you need that to keep your stability within the showering room as your hands get hot and cold and they react slightly different to different surfaces. So, um, you know, if you do uh, want some information on that or you want to be able to check that out, um, drop us a line in the, in the chat and we can send you some information on that. Um, we have a full range of shower seats for every different kind of uh, uh, client that might need those. Um, we do have, we have seats with, uh, with no legs, we have seats that will fold up, uh, up, up against the wall uh, that create uh, a lot of extra space. Um, we've got products that are recycled, uh, recycled plastic, um, very, very simple and easy to, to deep clean. We got, um, we got seats that have no finger traps. Um, there's a full range of seats for every, uh, every situation uh, that are available. Uh, if you just want to drop us a line and we can send you that information. Um, we also have within our group of, uh, of, of companies uh, uh, an accessories company as well. So we are available to supply um, practical accessories that don't look like the clinical accessories that we're kind of used to seeing in this market. Uh, they seem to be very popular at the moment. Uh, there, is, um, there is a huge market for, um, for independent living and, um, uh, and, and these accessories uh, suit very well into, uh, in, into everyday designs, into everyday bathroom designs. As a, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to drop us something onto the, uh, onto the chat. Okay, wet so rooms. Um, so this picture, if you can see this, is a build up of, of, of how our wet room former works. Now, a lot of people uh, might think that putting a wet room in is, is, is um, a, a very um, laborious kind of uh, uh, in installation. It is, as, it is very, very simple. So if you think of it, um, if you think of the wet and former that we supply as a replacement floorboard with a drainage hole in it, uh, that's an easy way of explaining on, on, on how simple this is to put down. So really, uh, in most cases, you really just need to treat this like a, like a replacement floorboard uh, with a drainage point that can then be covered with a, a non-slip vinyl flooring uh, for complete protection. So when I say replacement floorboard, the former is 22 mil thick, the same as the standard floorboard that we put into, uh, in, in, into, our, in, into our houses these days. Um, and the support is, is, um, is, is very limited because of the robustness of the actual product itself. So the product is called Level Deck Easy Fit, and there it is in its entirety. Now, um, we designed this uh, probably 10 years ago. Um, you'll see there's a, a huge difference with this and a lot of the other formers that you see on the market. You'll see there's a, there's a 400 mil hole in the middle of it. Now that will accommodate what we call an eccentric drain plate. And what we mean by that is uh, we have a 400 mil, let's say a plug that will uh, accommodate the drain and we can change the position of that drain to, uh, to allow uh, an end user to to uh, not to stand on it, if that's uh, something that is necessary. Um, but uh, equally as importantly for the installer to be able to position that drain in the floor without any kind of obstacles. So if you can imagine uh, the, the muddle that you'd see under the floor when you pull the floorboards up, you never know what you're gonna get from there. Um, if there's very, very limited space in there because of pipe works, double joists, or, uh, or, or, or previous work that's gone on, you've got the option to spin that all the way around that 400 mil hole and to gain uh, a drainage position that's gonna suit you um, to ensure that you can get that drain in there or just so that you can get the, uh, the pipe work to where you need it to go as, uh, for your exit strategy. 
Now, the Leverdeck former, as I said, is 22 mil thick. It's made from a very, very strong GRP. Now, that strength is, uh, is gained from the process of how it's made. The process is called sheet molded compound. What that does, it enables us to, uh, to, to bond the GRP together with the with right amount of heat, um, but, but more importantly, with 150 tonne of pressure, um, that gives it the strongest thing that you'll ever put into the floor. So it's very strong, it's very lightweight, but it's also very um, um, uh, durable. Uh, you can trim it with a handsaw if you needed to, uh, to cut it down to customize the area that you're going to put it into. Um, the rotating waste plate, uh, base plate uh, for the waste is, is probably um, the, the, the most important feature for installation, and that can save up to, up to half a day of, uh, of extra support underneath, uh, moving pipe work, uh, but not just, not just time, but money as well. So if you've got uh, gas pipes under there, um, you'd need to get someone who's, who's gas safe or gas wise. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's extra cost. Uh, if you had to get an electrician in to move electrics that are under there, that's, that's an, an, another initial cost as well. So uh, that's, that, that clever little design of uh, being able to spin that waste all the way around that circle um, is, um, is, is priceless to, uh, to the installer. Uh, but also it's, um, you know, it's, it's going to save money on that installation. So it's going to save money on the, uh, on, on the DFG as well, enabling uh, to, to, to free up money for, for other stuff. Um, so it's trimmable. It's trimmable with a handsaw. Why would you cut it down? Uh, maybe you've got an area that's a little bit small. Uh, maybe you've got uh, an abundance of these formers and one of them is, um, is, 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 is a little bit too big. Uh, maybe you've got a cut stack pipe into the corner. Maybe you've got slightly out of square walls. Um, maybe there's a utility or a bulkhead or um, you know, anything like that in there that, um, that that might mean that you've got to cut it down. So every one of those uh, uh, formulas has got slightly different trim. Um, the bigger they are, the more trim that you can get. All of that uh, information is available on a spec sheet if you need that. Uh, if you are a specifier and you need these sizes and you need all the waist positions and you need trim marks, um, you can uh, drop the guys a, a quick um, uh, message and they, can, uh, and they can put you in the right direction for a, a spec sheet so you can specify this. Um, so we have 12 standard sizes available, but as I say, um, you know, they're not standard. They are standard to us um, as a manufacturer because that's how we make them, um, but they can all be manipulated into anything that, um, that you might need to make that work in the situation that you have. So you can see on that slide there, there are a lot of different sizes. Uh, the most common size that we see in healthcare is 13 by eight. Um, the, the most um, common that we see in, 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 in our retail market is 12 by nine, uh, which has always been the same. Um, the most practical sizes in healthcare really are the 1200 by 1200 and the, uh, the 15 by 1200. Um, now that enables you to have a, a decent bit of turning space in the room. Uh, there is only um, a, a, a limited uh, dip in that tray. Now, a lot of people would assume that there's a, there's a big dip in there um, it's got a one in 40 gradient. So if you put a, a straight edge across the top, you get about a 15 mil drop over that surface area. So uh, it's enough to take uh, up to 30 plus liters of water away per minute, which is more than enough, uh, but not, not enough for someone to get a day chair or a wheelchair uh, stuck in there where they couldn't get it out. So um, we would normally say the bigger, the bigger wet room area that you have, the, the easier it is to contain the water and the less uh, chance uh, um, you would need to, to contain that water with half height doors uh, if you needed complete access for something like a shower bed. So there are uh, a completely uh, um, full range of different sizes for that, but as I say, uh, they can all be uh, trimmed and adjusted down on site um, by the installer with a, with a, with a handsaw. So here's a few schematic drawings of the um, the, the movement in the, uh, in the eccentric drain plate. Now, there are, um, there are um, slight alternatives to this, um, but this is, this is made in the UK. This is the most robust former that you will get in the UK. And out of all the formers in the UK, um, pretty much all of them have got a fixed waste position. Uh, we are seeing a, um, you know, a, an alternative uh, but it doesn't give you as much option as, uh, as, as having a complete circle in there uh, because it means that we can position that waste all the way around that circle rather than having it in slightly different stages where um, it kind of reduces the, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, positions down to three or four uh, usable positions. So uh, with this, we're, in, we're able to position this waste anywhere that you need to in the, uh, in, in the, uh, within that 400 mil hull. Okay, now I want to play a video for you. I'm going to talk you through this one. Now, this is uh, Toby, who's on the end of the uh, technical side of the chat line. Uh, he's installing one of these uh, easy fits. And you can see it's, it's been put in nicely. Um, we'll get a shot in a minute so you can see what he's doing. So there's the eccentric drain plate. There's nothing flimsy about that at all. Um, we've got... Um, we've got a 40 stone weight limit on, on the whole of this and that includes that, uh, that eccentric drain plate as well. Now you see that it's hatched underneath. Now that's done there for strength. Um, it's not solid, so it's a little bit lighter than it used to be, but the hatched area will, uh, will also allow it to be uh, uh, bedded down onto a concrete floor um, and, and the hatched area will allow the bedding to go up underneath it to give you a solid bed uh, and, and a full bed of adhesive that um, will enable it to be stuck down onto a concrete floor. Now you see the smooth part under there, you can actually trim these formers all the way down to the smooth part of the underside of the former. Uh, you can see it's very, very rigid around the outside edges. And uh, although Toby is a very strong guy, you can see he picked it up with one arm, so you can see how light it is. Okay, so you can see he's putting it into the floor, he's offering it up, he's making sure that the floor's level. For installation, that's one of the most important things of, uh, of any level access. It needs to be in level. Uh, the second most important thing is the rest of the floor needs to be level or you have a positive gradient running towards the former itself to increase that, that, that usable area. Now you can see uh, there's a few obstacles going on under the floor there. There's a few gas pipes that we can't move. Um, so Toby's going to demonstrate there where the eccentric drain plate can be moved to avoid the unforeseen things going on under... Uh, under the floor, which as I said earlier, you can't see those things until until you actually take that floor up. So there's no way that you can work that out. Uh, so having that product on hand, uh, is gonna save you a lot of time, a lot of money. So you can see the gas pipes, we need to avoid those. And there's the gap that we need to be able to get the 100 mil of the, uh, of the waste pipe underneath. Now you'll also see he's cutting it with a handsaw. Now that's quite important. Um, if, you, uh, if you can't take a diamond tip angle grinder, into somebody's house uh, because of noise, because of dust, and you don't want to walk down 30 stories to get uh, uh, to get to the van to cut it out the van uh, with a, with a simple handsaw. You can cut it with uh, with a reduced amount of mess uh, that can be quite easily hoovered up. Now you can see uh, there's a few extra supports gone into uh, the way that this is being installed. Now we call those noggins down here. If we're in Scotland, they call them dwangs. Um, but if I say support, that's, um, that, that's a word that everybody can get their head around. Um, that needs to be done all the way around the outside edges and potentially to close up any gaps smaller than 415 centre. Now you see in the video there, uh, the, the, the trap splits into two parts. Now that enables you to be able to test that trap for water tightness uh, to ensure that you don't go any further if, uh, if that trap's not supporting the water properly and it's not draining the water away without any leaks. So that gives you a stand back and check. So, so for all those people that say that weapons leak, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the bit that will give you the option to stand back and check to make sure it's not going to leak before you go ahead and put anything permanent down on top. So the last part of this video is the top part of the waste going in. You can see Toby's now putting in the, uh, the seal that will seal the top part in. And just a few simple screws will connect that from the top so you can actually get the waste in, you can make sure it's going to work, you can test it, you can wet test it before the guy comes in and does the vinyl. Now the last thing you'll see Toby put in here in a second is a little black disc. Now that little black disc is left in there till the vinyl guys come along and the vinyl guys come and cover it all with the vinyl. They then locate that little disc and they cut around the inside perimeter of that so it's got a perfect hole ready for them to put the clamp back in the cap. So that's a, a, a speedy explanation of really what this, uh, what this product does. Um, that video is actually available on our website if you need to see that. Uh, I'm sure we can send you a link if you wanted a close look at it. Um, now this page shows you a few of the drainage options that we have with this product. Um, you'll see that the round cap on there means that it's for vinyl. 
So um, when I say a couple of options, uh, the standard option is the one that says 200 mil wide above it. Now that has got a quarter, a quarter turn cap on the top so that you can take the insides out to, to make sure that you can clean it. Um, the one that's on the left-hand side with the 75 mil water seal is really designed for uh, commercial drainage and, and multiple use. So, you know, if uh, there's a converted nursing home or something like that, where you've got showers that are back to back and it needs a slightly bigger drainage system, the 75 mil water seal will tick that box as well. So the one that, uh, that you see that's uh, got the light gray top to it, uh, it's a slim line. Now that's a very, very slim trap. So if you are limited for depth um, to be able to get gravity waste in there and pump is not an option, uh, we have a waste that will keep the whole installation down to 69 mil, including the trap. So uh, that is a very good option uh, um, for, uh, let's say, a, a depth of screed that isn't penetra penetrable um, within, uh, within a certain depth. Um, or if you've got uh, a very cluttered um, uh, floor space going on under the floor. Now, the option to the far right is a pumped option. Now, that pumped option will enable anybody in any situation to have a wet room. So if you're ever in any conflict with your contractors and they're saying, we, ca we physically can't fit that, um, that wet room into the situation, please do get them to give us a call uh, within the technical department or drop us an email, explain what they're trying to do, and we'll come up with a solution for it. Um, but um, never take no for an answer. There are a lot of uh, solutions uh, that we've come up with to ensure that anybody can put weapons in because we know how important it is to be able to tick the box of Part M regs and the Equalities Act for level access. Again, any questions on drainage, uh, please drop us, uh, drop us a, a question. Okay, just one, one minute, Sean, we're near, near the end. Okay, I've got a couple of slides I just wanted to share with you, and this is the fun part of it. Um, now, this is a couple of case studies that we've done in the past. This one you might have seen on TV. Uh, this is the DIY SOS Big Build. Um, now, this was, uh, this was a fun one, as, as they always are. Um, you know, we got, some good, uh, we got some good exposure from this one, um, but it was really fun to make sure that the, uh, the end result was as good as what we wanted it to be. Um, and we also have another one here. Um, now, this was a, a, really, a really good one and a very important one. As you can see, uh, little Joan is, um, you know, he's transported around the house with hoists. Um, you know, the, all the doors are wide enough for his, uh, for his life chair and his, um, and his moving chairs and stuff. And, um, and, and we managed to get involved in that as well, which is was, uh, was always good. And, and really for, for all of us, everybody who's, who's involved in Impy, this is the bit that makes you uh, or allows you to go home with a smile. Okay, thanks for your time. Thanks for having us, Paul. Uh, if you have any questions, um, Paul, if you've got any questions there that you want to hit with us. No, I think, yeah, I think um, Sarah's answered them all as, as you've been going along and lo lo lots of links in the chat box if anyone wants to follow up on extra information, videos or, or product guides. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So uh, that goes to show that teamwork is the key. Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Paul. All the best. Thank you.